Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel, my name is Ron, and today we're going to be going over builds for the Shard Diffractor and Deep Rock Galactic. This is not going to be uh, overclocked builds, this is going to be non-overclocked builds. I haven't really got to test out all of the overclocks as much as I would like with the Shard Diffractor, um, so that video will probably be coming later. I imagine the other weapons will be coming kind of soon because I have been able to test them out and I do like certain builds with them. So for this I'm going to be doing two builds for the Shard Diffractor that I've found work pretty well. The first one is going to be a heat build to build up heat fast so that you can light things on fire. It works really well on the new Rival Presence missions, works really well against robots, and it can work pretty well against most enemies that you can at least light on fire. It's not very good on Dreadnought missions. The second is going to be a single target damage build, which is pretty good on Dreadnought missions and mostly used to kill big things at a distance. So in tier one, we have three options here. Impact Splash, which gives us two more area damage, so we go from seven to nine. We have uh, increased energy density, which increases our direct damage from 7 to 9. And then we have larger battery, which increases our total ammo from 300 to 400. Usually I'll go with extra ammo for this build. Um, it helps more than these other two for building up heat faster, and that's what the primary goal of it is. So I don't really care about the extra damage. The Shard Diffractor already does pretty high damage anyway, at least to smaller enemies and to crowds. So that's why I take larger battery for my needs. In tier two, our options are soft tissue disruption, which gives us 33% more weak spot damage. That's pretty useful. And then we have particle spatter. This one uh, increases our AOE so we can hit more enemies with it. Usually I'll go with the AOE here because if I'm building up heat, it can be useful to build up heat on multiple enemies, so if there are crowds of grunts, I can use it. Both of these are fine, though. Um, I switch between them pretty often. In Tier 3, our options are Aluminum Foil DIY, which increases our charge capacity by 50. This makes it so we hold uh, 100 rounds in the gun rather than the 50 rounds. This one's pretty nice. And then we have the Open Structure Battery. This one cuts down on our recharge time by half, so our gun recharges twice as fast. That is pretty useful. Usually I go with the uh, faster recharge, but either one of these is great. It's really your call. Whichever you're more comfortable with, just take that one. In tier four, we have high intensity heating. This increases our direct heat uh, from 25% to 100%. Or we have armor breaking. This gives us 400% armor breaking, or I guess nitrogen vaporizer, sorry. Should read the names. We're just gonna go with the heat here. That's what the main goal of this build is so that we can build up heat fast on certain enemies, particularly robots, turrets. Um, nemesis. Then our options in tier 5 are Hydrogen Rupturing. This increases our damage by 33% as well as our area effect damage to any enemies that are affected by electricity. This also counts for the IFG and if it is for the IFG then the IFG bonus also on top of there so it'll be another 30% added. This one's really good for killing big targets quickly. It's really good if you want to pair this with Stubby. Um, it can be really good with the Loki as well because Loki can apply electricity too. Not as good with a shotgun unless of course you are pairing this with somebody who's running scout and has IFGs in which case then it's fine. Our second option is biomass converter. This makes it so killing a medium to larger enemy or very large enemy will refund three ammo of your current charge capacity uh, and prolong the firing duration. This can only apply every 0.25 seconds so I can't just keep stacking one after another. It does take time to stack and then stack and then stack. This can be really good for clearing up hordes. Um, so if you want to build the Shard Diffractor for that, it works really well. For bigger targets, it usually doesn't matter all that much, but uh, it does work well for hordes. And of course, it doesn't work for smaller hordes like swarmers or jellyfish since they're not a medium or a large enemy. And then our last option is Dazzler Module. And this makes it so all enemies being hit by the Shard Diffractor as well as the AoE damage of the Shard Diffractor have their movement speed slowed by 80% for one second. I usually take this one, I find it really useful for lighting things on fire, especially hordes, because we do have a larger AoE here, so we can slow down a horde for whatever we're hitting, so if we find a Praetorian or a Presser or just a guard that we want to hit, we can then spread the fire out to other enemies and light multiple enemies on fire. This is the first way that I build it, and it's really good for robots, really good for hordes, and okay for single targets. Usually I'll build my primary weapon for that, so I'll take this with like the shotgun. The second build is more for uh, large targets like Dreadnoughts, Oppressors, Praetorians, anything that you want to kill quickly, and this pairs really well with Stubby or with the Loki. So in tier 1 I will go with the increased uh, charge density so that we get a little bit more direct damage. This will increase our overall damage by a decent amount since we're also going to be pairing it with soft tissue disruption. So when we are hitting those weak points, we're doing an additional 33% more damage on top of them. Tier 3 is your choice. You can go with the aluminum foil or you can go with the faster charge. Both are really good. Usually I'll go with the clip capacity here just because if I want to hold it on a large enemy longer than I can, especially if a dreadnought is not focusing me, helps stack up the damage a little bit faster. Tier 4, I'll usually go with the armor breaking. This just helps if I do need to hit something that is armored. I can break through the armor a little bit quicker. Of course, I want to be hitting the weak spots, but 
If that's not an option, breaking the armor and dealing more damage to the enemy is also a good choice. And then at tier 5, I'll usually go with the Hydrogen Rupturing. This is just so that I can pair it with Stubby or pair it with an Electric Loki so that we can then apply the Electricity status effect to enemies. Usually I do this with Stubby because it's a little bit faster to apply it to it and Stubby has a lot of extra bullets so you don't have to worry about running through ammo as much. And then I'll switch over to this and then spray it down with the Shard Diffractor to kill it really fast. Uh, if you're not taking that, you want to take something like mini shells with the shotgun or lightweight cases with the shotgun, or maybe you're running a low chance of electricity on stubby and you want to run something else. Then you could also go with like the biomass converter or the slowdown. All of these are pretty good in tier five. Biomass will make it so you can kill uh, hordes a little bit faster. Well, not necessarily faster, but you can keep the uh, pressure up longer and potentially get some refunded ammo back from that. And the slowdown is just really good for hitting anything large that is going to be an issue. It's really good at keeping detonators away, it's really good at keeping Nemesis away, and it, and it can be also used to keep back Praetorians, uh, Oppressors, Guards, really anything that's going to be trying to kill you quickly. Slowdowns are always nice. So those are the two builds that I usually use with the Shard Diffractor. You could build this for AoE too. I've tried that a couple of times, but the AoE with the Shard Diffractor is just not way great. It's better with some of its uh, overclocks, but if you want a crowd clear, then the breach cutter and the grenade launcher are generally better for that role. This is usually better at longer range for taking out single targets or for dealing damage to multiple targets while you're trying to kill something large. So it kind of has indirect AOE, whereas if you just, you know, fire the grenade launcher into a crowd, it'll probably clear up a lot of the small enemies. Next up, we're going to be taking a look at the coil gun because I haven't done that one yet without overclocks. And then we'll be taking a look at all these weapons once again, once I have enough uh, information for myself and enough ways to build these with all of their overclocks. Like I said, with the Shard Diffractor, I have not got to use a lot of its overclocks. For the other weapons though, like the crossbow, I've been using all of its overclocks pretty frequently. So I know how that one works and that one should be coming out soon. Same goes with like the Wave Cooker and I have been using the Coil Gun a lot more too. So thank you guys so very much for watching this. I really do appreciate it. And uh, special thanks to the supporters of this channel. These are all my members over here on YouTube and my patrons over on Patreon. They get early access to videos like this. And if you'd like to be a part of it, you can. There are links down in the description of this video. Thanks to everybody who does that. It does help out the channel a lot. I hope you guys have a great day and I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.